guys the uh, heat dome has passed over us now we had intense record-breaking heat here on the southern Gulf Islands and the southwest coast of British Columbia and other parts of southern uh, British Columbia so what I'm about gonna do right now is walk you around the garden and show you the heat damage to uh, many of our exotic plants first of all we'll start with this Daphne you can see it showing up on the foliage here crispy brown burnt from the heat the Sun even the uh, gardenias, these are Klein's Hardy. You can see the uh, damaged leaves here. It's kind of like when you have winter damage and it starts to show up after the uh, cold has passed. Well, the extreme heat has passed now, but it's still warm out here. It's still about uh, 24 degrees Celsius. And uh, what time are we? Just about, six, just about 6 p.m. But you can see the damage on the foliage here to the gardenia. And uh, even on this sago palm here, you can see the burn. You gotta remember, it's much hotter along the south wall too. The banana leaves got fried on that Cavendish. And uh, the fatsias took a real beating, unfortunately. Um, that one, not so bad, which I'm really surprised because maybe they've been growing in full sun for so long. But the other ones uh, on that side down there, well, we're gonna go to those uh, after I show you the upper garden. I'm gonna show you the damage on them. Crispy, fried, leaves from the heat we had we we're over 100 degrees here for a few days and well over 100 one day so even this trachycarpus frond is showing the heat uh heat and sun damage on it it was just so intense it was like a wall of gross heat that would hit you when you'd walk out of the house and it was gross in the house too because we don't have air conditioning here so uh just about 500 people uh, died from the heat uh on the southwest coast of british columbia look at this even the crocosmia is burnt Burnt the leaves on that. The butias look good. And not all trackies are burnt. These ones are in the shade. They're perfect. But I'll show you the rotos. This roto here gets partial day sun, but the heat, it was the heat too. It was just that intense. Even this native tree that sprouted up here, it's got some damage on it. All right, so this is one of Wendy's rotos. The rotos definitely have damage on them. Camellias, I've never seen damage like this before ever, okay? This is a first. This is record-breaking heat we're talking about. Camellias, Really starting to show up now the damage, the heat damage on our Camellia japonicas. Wendy's got a lot of Camellias. Hibiscus seem to like it. Let's go look at this Fatsia and I'm going to show you some of our privets too. Uh, Jasmine likes it. And our Butus branch just fell off and hit me in the head. That hurt. Uh, so the Jasmine's uh, blooming like crazy now. This one loves the heat. And I'm really surprised the Fuchsia did not get heat damage on it as well. Because you figure these would not like that intense heat. But man, they're just thriving. It's beautiful. And the jasmines, look at this thing. It's just popped it into full bloom. And more flowers to come on this thing. It's very, very fragrant. But this one had some damage on it. The first blast of heat we had, and then we got that really intense heat. Cooked it a bit more. Those fatsy trees up there have some damage on them. All right. And then this one in front of her gallery 59 has damage. This fatsy here. You can see all the crispy, crispy leaves. What a shame. I mean, they're not gonna, it's not gonna kill them. They're gonna recover, new leaves are gonna come out. And I just pray, pray that we never see temperatures like that again. It was just absolutely sickening hot here. Like I say, I've never experienced heat like that in my life. Uh, I'm surprised that this did not get burnt either, her uh, Clematis armandi. Some of the plants that I thought would get fried did not get fried. The butylon I thought would get fried, but it obviously didn't. And you know, look at the leaves on it. They look so tender but it didn't, and that's an evergreen plant. And then I'm gonna show you some privets here. The tree fern here, the new frond coming out, the heat destroyed that. That's a Dixonia. Here's the uh, privet. You can see the damage, heat damage to the leaves. This doesn't even get full sun. It was just so intense, the heat. It was absolutely not so here for Salt Spring Island. And working out, it was even worse. It was just, it was terrible. Uh, I think this one's got damage on it too. This one here, cooked the leaves a little bit on this poor thing. This is a uh, vine maple, got too hot. That's a native tree, but not native to Salt Spring, but native to the Southwest Coast. And uh, thank God the Schaeffleras were fine. They obviously can handle the heat. And uh, this one took a beating. The uh, variegated fatsia has got some burn on it. Uh, top's not too bad, but there's still a lot of fried leaves maybe a little bit on that roto there not too bad ferns not too bad surprising and uh, we'll go down to the uh, front garden in front of the B&B &B. 
and we'll show you what's going on down there. That palm looks okay. Bamboo's dried out, some of it. Oh, let's go over here. I think the hydrangea spare needs some water. It's starting to droop. There, that one's burnt too. Growing in partial shade from just the heat. That's how intense the heat was. It burned these privets. Look at that. It's just unflippin' believable. There's another Chef Lara. That one's fine. It's the latest one we planted. That's wilted, so we gotta water that. Kiwi flowers took a bit of a hit. Some of them dried up and fell off. Just, they roasted. It's like they roasted right off the frickin' plant. And, uh, well, let's go down here and I'm gonna show you some more damage. Heat damage on Salt Spring Island. Summer heat damage. And it's still June. I mean, this happened in June. We're not even into July yet. We still got the rest of the summer to go through, which is absolutely insane. This, fa this fatsia took a real beating too. Lots of fried, fried leaves on it. It's upsetting to see stuff get damaged like that. You know what I mean? I mean, our stuff does better in the winter often because the summers are so dry here. That's when we're going to lose plants. Oh man, this does not look good. This got fried. All the leaves on this meta sequoia are fried off. Not only the tree's not dead, but unreal. Just crispy. Oh, unbelievable. It could not handle the, the intense heat. So that's a meta sequoia, Don Redwood, crispy. Uh, yuccas can handle the heat. Needle palms can handle the heat. Camerops handle the heat. Sables and brachias, okay. Cactus, love it. I'm going to show you the uh, bamboo here. That bamboo is okay. That bamboo absolutely hated it. It's all crispy, dry. So I've got to hit it with some water. Hopefully that one will perk up. And um, camera ops down here. Oh, this roto took a bit of a hit. Not too bad. It's growing in more shade, but still just the intense heat. But the damage is starting to show now. There's more damage showing heat damage. You gotta remember, when you got temperatures of like 106, 107, 108 degrees Celsius, it causes, or Fahrenheit, Celsius, my God, I'd be dead too. It causes a lot of damage, right? So, um, camera ops good. Blue serifera looks good. They, they can handle the heat. Um, and then the sables, there's sable palms in here and more camera ops. They look good. That tracky looks all right. Let's go down here. That maple, definitely damaged. Look at this. Wendy's prize, Japanese maple, crispy leaves on that, heat damage. Cordy lines are even drier up there too. They did have some dry on them, but I noticed there's a bit more. And uh, bay trees are okay. Heavenly bamboo's good. And these fatsias took a kicking too. They got some burnt, burnt leaves on them. Eucalyptus trees are sprouting back like mad. This one's starting to pop now too. I didn't really want it to come back, but it's doing it. Um, passion vine is good. Camera ops down here. A little bit of drying on the ends of the Clematis armandi there. And there's passion vine in there. Uh, what else we got? More burn on the uh, Kencha palm. You know, this did have some on it before because we did have some uh, heat come through here in May, which was intense. It didn't like it. It had dried it up a bit, but now there's even more burn on it. So that's a Kencha. So that doesn't look too happy. That's loving the growth, the new growth coming out of it, the heat, eucalyptus. And uh, let's see what else we got here. What else can we show you? That Sago, new one we planted in here, was perfectly green before the heat. You got some burn on there, bit of burn on there, Sago palm. This absolutely loves it, the kumquat, busts this thing into bloom. And I think this has some damage on it too. Does it have damage? Yes, it does. Tan bark oak starting to show up too. Damage on it. So a lot of broadleaf evergreens in our garden got hammered here. Exotic broadleaf evergreens. Look at that. What a cool plant, eh? It's a beautiful evergreen tree. Camellias took a beating. These are Camellia japonica. These ones down here. Just the, the heat was so intense uh, that got burnt. That's Pieris japonica. Look at this. Camellias and more damage showing up. More fatsy is burnt there. Even this tracky, it was so hot down here. Even the fronds fried on this tracky. Look at that. It's just carpus Heat damage on a tracky carpus palm. You can see the burn in there and more of it's starting to show up now. And of course our beloved Dixonia Antarctica, the tree fern. I thought it would be worse than that, but you know what? There's more starting to show up on it, which really sucks. 
So I don't know, maybe, maybe it will lose all its fronds. I don't know. I can see it starting to show up on the new fronds too. This is last year's fronds. Fatsy here took a kicking. Look at that, just beat, burnt, crispy. That's how intense the heat was here, folks. It was absolutely mind-blowing. It was like an oven. It's, it shouldn't happen here on Salt Spring Island, but it did happen. And like I say, Lytton, uh, the highest temperature, the hottest temperature recorded was in Lytton in our province, 121.1 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, which is around, uh, what is it, 40, is it 46.9 or something like that? Or, yeah, is it something like that, or 49.5? It was way up there. You can figure that out. So it's hotter than any recorded temperature in Vegas. It's, and that's what the temperature was in Lytton. And then we'll go over to this fatsia here. Burnt up there. Eucalyptus is good. Crispy, crispy leaves on there. There's the chainsaw trackie. And it really popped the growth out of this stump, eucalyptus stump. And uh, that didn't take a hit at all. The strawberry trees, the queen palm looks good. Needle palms look good. Bananas back there are good. But so there's a lot of uh, plants they have to recover. Even the avocado burnt. It got that hot back here on the south wall. It's just crazy. Look at the damage. I'm going to go show you the cordy lines now and then we'll call her quits. I just watered that. I've been watering this thing a lot. Oh, and the Camadoria got really fried too. It, it was coming along and then it took a real beating. This is Camadoria Microspadex. Guess it didn't like that heat. And it did have some drying on it, but it's got more on it now. And uh, what else do we got here? Nothing much down here to show you. You've seen all the damage. And we'll go back up and I'll show you the accordy lines. They did have some dry on them because it has been extremely dry here, the weather. We, I mean, that's the thing. The summer months here, you don't really see rain. You can go all summer without rain. Oh, these took a kick in too. These, uh, these are hellebores. They dried out. Look at that. Fried from the heat. Hellebores. Poor little things. I'll show you the accordy lines and then we'll... Call her a day on the video camera, folks. This is a shade garden here. Oh, nice, that fats you did. Planted that one in the spring. And the oleanders uh, are doing really well. The pittosporum took a beating. So I'm gonna have to water that. It's, it's wilted, but it's burnt too. Pittosporum taburii in there, it's wilted. Gotta do that. That camera ops looks good. You can see the aloes blooming. And you can see the cordy lines even have more more damage on them now too, from the heat. That's just, that's heat stress, man. It's insane, just really insane. This, this heat belongs in Dallas, Texas, not here on Salt Spring Island, all right? Thanks for watching, guys. And uh, like and subscribe for more videos and I hope you never have to go through anything like this if you live this far north. We're 48 degrees north latitude, southern Gulf Islands, and this is heat damage. Hey, the hibiscus is butted up. Good. Hibiscus loves the heat. Camellias don't like that intense heat. All right. Cheers, guys. Keep your gardens watered well. Happy Palmer and exotic plant growing.